We are so materialistic now that we hold up the college degree and whatever white collar job might come after it as the holy grail. You know, you could do, you could be a hedge fund manager and make sixty million dollars a year easily, hundred million dollars a year. You could. It's happening sure. even right now, and then you'll be successful. You know, Kanye West was giving a, an interview, one of his, you know, many, the other day, and he was like, "Why didn't you introduce me as a billionaire?" I'm a billionaire. I want to be introduced as a billionaire. It's like, not as an artist, not as what an entrepreneur, but like, I'm a bill. It's all about the money, the money. And I don't know, is it that we're just no longer holding up blue collar jobs as something of value, something of respect, something meaningful. And so people aren't going into those jobs or that we're just, we've abandoned all training. We've abandoned the pathways. This, that, and about five or six other things as well. Look, part of it too is the varsity blues routine. I mean, I'm, I'm think about the pressure of raising your three kids, right? Think about what it feels like to not want to screw them up. That's so hardwired into our DNA that as parents, you know, we look around and say, well, is there a playbook? Is there just a short list, a rudimentary list of things I can do so as to not screw my kids up. And yeah, I, I I think there is, but somehow get them to college wound up on that list. And so parents are under enormous pressure. Guidance counselors in many cases are getting bonused out on their ability to transition kids into four-year schools, not apprenticeships, not trade schools, not community colleges. We've got our thumb on the scale in a very real way. And it's created it's created more pressure than I think I can understand. I mean, to be 17 years old and to be given a chance to sign on the dotted line, borrow 30, 50, 80, dollars $100,000. I mean, we don't put that kind of pressure on people to buy a house or really anything. It's it's really amazing, and I and I don't say any of that because I favor some sort of forgiveness of student loans. I don't, but I am mindful of, of the incredible pressure that trickles down and the unbelievable PR. You know, college needed a PR campaign back in the 70s and 80s. We, we genuinely needed more people to go in pursuit of some of this thing we call higher education, but... But we bitched it all up. You know, we didn't just make the case for a four-year school. We made the case at the expense of all other forms of education. Mm -hmm. So now there's stigmas and stereotypes and myths and misperceptions and all kind of bull crap that keep people from pursuing many of these 11 million open jobs right now that paradoxically are the very jobs that make civilized life possible for the rest of us. So, well, so, so let's talk about, talk about that. Why? Why are those 7 million guys, able-bodied and young, 25 to 54, sitting on the sidelines? Well, to be fair, my friends on the left, when I ask them that question, will tell me reflexively and instinctively that it's because the jobs suck. The pay is lousy. And those greedy and rapacious corporate overlords could fix this problem if they simply were more generous vis-a-vis -vis their remuneration. The other side, my friends on the right will say, because people are freaking lazy. That's why. There's no work ethic. Now, there's some truth, maybe, to some degree in both, but this is how work ethic gets politicized. This is how the skills gap gets politicized. By the way, I'm not so sure there's a skills gap anymore. There's a will gap, for sure. Mm. But if Nick Eberstadt were here, he, he would say, you can't just look at why they're not working. You've got to look at what they're doing instead and what the research indicates. And these are surveys that people take. The, in their own words, a majority of that cohort of people we're describing right now, these men, spend between 2,000 and 2,400 hours a year on screens. Uh -oh. That's what they're doing. Now, the average work week extrapolated over a year is 2,080 hours, right? 40 hours a week times 50 weeks or so, 52 weeks. Um, that's their full-time job. They're on their screens. Um, many are collecting disability, which is another story, right? You can yep. be able-bodied and collecting disability. I'm not saying that that, I'm not talking about the legitimate cohort who cannot work. 
I'm talking very specifically about this chunk of men. And next point is, look, that's never happened in a peacetime environment before. And you could maybe argue that this is not exactly peacetime, but, you know, he's he's looking at wars, right? And he's looking at what happens to the workforce during a war. And he's looking at our obsession with the unemployment number, which really is just an artifact from a depression era level of trying to make sense of what's going on in the economy. Because in those days, the number of people who were unemployed usually reflected uh, a dearth of opportunity. But that's all gone now. There are 11 million open jobs. You can't walk down any street in any town and not see the help wanted signs. And that means something else. There's something else going on in the country. It's unpleasant. It's troubling. It's important. Um, And we have to talk about it. We have to find a way to stop looking at the workforce in terms of the number of people who are unemployed and see it instead through the lens of the number of people who have affirmatively chosen not to work. Mm -hmm. What, I mean, I can't help but I'm stuck on the, on the internet and the screens. And I have to ask, you know, back in our day before there was an iPhone, (laughs) was there anything like this? You know, is it's back to the age old technology question of, you know, more, more good or, or, not as a result of these phones? Like, have they helped or hurt more? I think personally, I remember a professor in college talked about the uh, displacement theory, basically saying that there was a belief that um, uh, movies would displace um, newspapers and TV would displace movies and the internet would displace TV and so forth and so on. And, And And of course, what really happens is they're not displaced, they just change. And something like that, I think, is happening here. There there are a litany, an endless litany of ways to screw off. There always have been. There are lots of things you can do instead of working. But I don't think we've seen anything like this because there is something truly addictive. And yes. going back to your monologue, you know, if 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 you think we're living in a self-obsessed, narcissistic world driven by some weird relationship with victimhood, and then you look at what all that means to people who are now indoors all the time, looking at their screens, on TikTok, on Reels, I literally, not to bring it back to the bowl, but there I was this morning, waking up, <laughs> sitting down, getting my day started, And I grab my stupid phone and like 10 minutes later, I'm still sitting there scrolling through reels, just watching, watching this thing. I'm a grown man. I have a big day. I have an interview scheduled with Megyn Kelly, for God's sakes. But there I am on the bowl, 60 years old, looking at some guy (laughs) show me some freaking magic trick. And then the next and the next and the next. (laughs) Something's happening. Something's happening here. Are you tired of feeling like someone's always watching you on the internet? Maybe advertisers know a little bit too much about you, or you're concerned about the privacy of your identity. Using incognito mode will not solve the problem either. IPVanish VPN is here to protect your right to privacy and to help you stay anonymous online. IPVanish helps you safely browse the internet without exposing your private details to third parties like hackers, your ISP, or advertisers. When you use IPVanish, All of your data is encrypted. That means your private details, your passwords, your communications, your browsing history, and much, much more will be completely shielded from falling into the wrong, weird, prying hands. Even your physical location will be hidden. IPVanish is offering an incredible 70% off their yearly plan for our listeners with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So try it. If you don't like it, you got a 30-day money-back guarantee. This is like getting nine months for free, 70% off. IP Vanish is super easy to use as well. You tap one button, you're instantly protected. Take your privacy back today with a brand rated 4.6 out of 5 on Trustpilot. Go to ipvanish.com slash Megan and use that promo code M-E-G-Y-N to claim your 70% savings. I-P-V-A-N-I-S-H dot com slash Megan. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.